you know, black folks, but basically I know we get sick of seeing down here, but we're going to show you that it goes around the sun, uh, and it's not the sun, okay, because of the time, see the time, this is not the sun, and we'll take you, and then you had the remnant that I showed you and stuff like that, the stuff will come up, and this is the most recent tape, too, I don't know if this is the one I taped yesterday or not, I'm not even paying attention to that right now, sometimes just things just go away, now, it's either Proximi Centauri, Aldenab, uh, Barnhart Star, uh, Rigo Cantaris B, it's, we're going to end up probably having a little bit of an idea, but as you watch this, I think I've got this going backwards, okay, that's going backwards, okay, and then I think it'll play forwards, but you see that it basically rotates around, because when we hit play, if we end up sending it that direction, or if it ends up coming back and playing, now there are people that go out to take samples or whatever the hell, I'm sure they got metal detectors and so forth and so on, and then when they go out with their snow machines sometimes and plow in a certain area, they're either smoothing it out for observations or going out and picking up minute metal that they can't find and scoop up the snow and find the asteroids or meteorites that are hitting the ground or whatever, radioactive energy. Okay, now this is going backwards, but as you will see, right about here, that it'll go away that rotates around that star. Okay, now it comes back out, okay? Even though the cloud cover... Because when you go ahead and hit play, and I'll just hit start, I think. I don't play with the player a lot. I just usually just find what I have and then go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to step it, and then I'll go back. And I'm going to say take time and go ahead and back it up. I don't waste a lot of time. So here we go. As we're going to be going forward, I believe, and it's going to be going away. And as you see, it's not really there, and now you can see it start to rotate over the star. And it might be Barnhart Star if it's the coolest thing, because it'll be the dead thing. It'll be the dark object, or it's just a, a moon that orbits that star sun, okay? And just about everything has got what we call a moon, okay? Whether it's technically it or not. Okay, now i got to go back, I think, step, 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 as we go forward. As you see, even though the cloud cover's there, it rotates, because it would be, okay, and that's why we know it's not a camera flare. That actually is a dark object. As you see that it's tumbling back over to the right, and then we're going to show you that, yes, the sun even twists as it goes through. And this is a star. It is a sun. It's either Rigel Cantaris A or B or Proximi Centauri, okay? And that darkness either is Denab or Denab. It could be even Denab at, like, uh, we'll see the percentages of 0.13%, I think, or whatever. I'm going to go to the data real fast. But just basically giving you a visual of actual, you're on the ground in the world, in Antarctica, and you can see this, and they're down there studying this, okay? Now, let me take you to the maps that, that will basically go in more often. I'm just backing it up, because you see that it goes across, and it basically comes towards Earth, goes away, comes towards Earth, goes away. And we've always kind of known this, scientists have, because when they look at their data, and that's what I try to always show you with you, is total data, facts, and truth, okay? Now, the one thing to not, I don't want people to worry too much, but the idea... We're going to also just give you a statement, and I'll roll down through all the stuff that the scientists talk about. Now, this is current, okay, of yesterday, and it hasn't been refreshed yet today. But as we go through this, this is the sun, and you will see that the idea that I'll also take you to, and they'll always mention 3D, when I showed you the 3D before, because we do know that when these people talk about these theories about the sun tracks through space in a spiral, well, they probably worked at a scientifical or something to do with NASA or an observing or, or an astronomer. And, well, you can't because you'd have to put a lot of filters on your telescope to be able to see the sun and not hurt your eyes or screw your telescope up. So, NASA knows that it twirls through like a bullet through space, even though it does rotate, okay? That is the sun, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And this is a track of it going through space, okay? Then a brighter side comes towards the SOHO or whatever that picks it up, the other cameras and instruments that are on the satellites, okay? There's way more than just those cameras that we get. We get the nice images from SOHO that freezes everything. Now, the interesting thing is to see the huge, and they don't like that, and it's not CPU usage, folks. They, that's when, when you hear that like that when I'm talking on the mic, basically it's letting them know that, hey, he's taping, so pay attention to what he's doing. So, hello everybody at NASA or, or Lawrence Scandia and everything like that. This is Beano Black, and the government knows who the hell I am. So, now, what we've got is right here is a huge, because it shows up just like when you scan the sun when they're scanning for the sun so that's the very slow movement of either a sun or something from the super giants that's very large and more than likely could possibly be the big mass that uh, 
Vatican set a telescope up in one of the space shuttles a long time ago to, to look at that. Okay. Uh, now well, I'm going to show you what idea we're going to. We know that eclipses exist. Okay. Duh. And then there's going to be a bunch of eclipses here in 2012. And then that's basically NASA information. I'll take you to up there. And then I'm going to take you to some of the Chinese information. And then I just want to, you know, the, hey, the State Department takes care of all the political between. So I try to watch all the remarks that I say. And, hey, I said thanks to the Chinese for letting us see. Now, this is a recent data thing that will happen between uh, 2012, 118, and 23. Now, what I was going to do is right now, and we're going to, you're going to find out right with me live more than likely when we look at this data, to see if idea that we're actually going to have another eclipse like we already did have. And it's somewhat, in a sense, we get really close to having one right here. Okay, so sometime between the 23rd and then I think that uh, 26th or the 25th of February and stuff like that is when we're going to have some big stuff coming by again. And then go to RSOE, the World uh, Emergency Radio Network, and they have all the information of volcanoes, earthquakes, and all that st stuff like that. I'm not going to waste time taking. So this was data that I took off the Chinese site down there. Uh, so we share the information. That you go there and you'll go like, well, God, we get along. Yeah, but that's scientifically, okay? If we get pissed off administratively between countries all the time, that's a totally different story, okay? So when, remember when you go into this, you always see overlays, okay? They always colorize things to see what that. That's why this black and gray stuff is always good to look at, okay? These are all the ones that are always colorized. Let me blow this up 400 and take you through this to understand. And I'm not going to move left and right, but you understand that they put color overlays on this stuff, okay? Like that, like this, okay, to, to see different things high and low images, okay? Basically bright and dim images, okay? So I can go ahead and we'll go to the movie that basically played here and I gotta pump it up to probably you know the dates okay and everything here. You're gonna see an object right there and right here and you're gonna see that they also try to cut it and okay right there. And there's tons of objects up there. These are all overlays. So they all overlay a lot of stuff that they don't want people to say see. But when you're looking at this one, this these two and that other gray one are very good to look at because all this stuff is humongous. We are not even the, we're not even the size of most of the grains on this one, folks. Earth is smaller than one of these grains. Okay, grains are the gray and white, very small. This stuff is huge. It's all these all these other material objects. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit us. Uh, I'm gonna step this. I'm gonna get down one more deal as I'm popping through it. Basically, it's just better because I don't have to. I'm getting sick and tired. Of, I don't make it look real pretty for you to get you to realize. That you'll see that object there, and there's lots. There's one, two, three, and there's probably a major one right there. Okay, you can see that silhouette there. Now let me pop up to uh, 400 and the idea that I'm gonna, still going to have to go down to plop all this, but you can see that huge one there. Okay, There's a huge optic there, huge optic there, and the idea that Earth is only even, not even as big as one of these specks of gray. Pick out the smallest little white thing you see here. That's Earth, folks, the tiniest one you'd find on the whole map. Okay, The sun is huge. And then the, what you've seen behind the moon, M45, is huge also, and they can't hide that. So let me one more. Uh, let me save some tape and go to some sharing, teaching, and everything. Now, just watch these objects as they move up and away from the sun, okay? And actually, I'm bringing them back down in, so you're going to see them come back towards the sun, okay? Now, remember, the sun spirals out there. Some of these objects might stay in a straight line. Some of them might spiral. It's hard to know. NASA would know, okay? So then we change. And we're going to take those objects, and you're going to see them coming up. You see that big, huge object going up? And then this other big one right here, and either probably one, two, and three there. That's why you always want to watch this stuff on full screen, folks. And you got other objects down here also moving away. So the sun is in the supergiants and getting into a lot of material. Now I'm going to take you to some scientific statements real fast, and we'll just scroll through them. And I'll kind of, you know, I'm not really going to give my theory on every one of them, because I know that basically... And then you got this here, and if you keep going through this, I'm going to hit play real fast, and you're going to see where they cut some, well, we have CME, but we also have, these are overlays, so they take and cover up some of the objects uh, on, there will be a little bit of a cut display, see over there, they covered up a certain object they don't want you to see going through here. There's certain data that they don't want to share, which is cool. I mean, you know, whatever they got, but it kind of helps everybody figure out, okay, look. And then it is. That's what's just stupid. Between scientists, we always have way. I mean, everybody's got ways of communicating, ladies and gentlemen. So the idea that if they're going to cut stuff out, then okay, we start looking there. And you will see a real dark planet. And what I'm starting to wonder, has that, you know, is it out? Because that is out in front of the sun because this is behind. Is that something that's still that where that little mark is? Is that a planet that is still cool enough, not getting enough heat blast or normally didn't before? Now, that's the thing is, okay, if we were closer to the sun, we would be trying to get off the Earth, okay? 
if some other and that's all I'm going because if you look at my videos in the past and I basically at the end of this for the next couple videos to keep you watching the videos will show you and basically you go back and look at all my videos and you will see where the idea that there is very impressive all you gotta do is get up and look at earth ladies and gentlemen and you'll know that mankind's been a lot around a lot longer than we admit to have been or being around okay okay so you can see all those objects moving in and out in a way okay when you really get and you could slow it down a little bit more you could just follow right trace it right along so now I'm gonna save tape yes folks in our orbit we spiral the moon does and we all do do Earth, the best thing to do on Earth is go to the magnetosphere, and most anybody at Dutch Sense you can tell you how to get to the magnetosphere. I'm not going to waste time with links. I do not have time for sharing links with everybody. I just share the data and stuff, what's going on, because basically I do my studies every day, and then it's recorded, diary, so forth, and everything like that, okay? And then it basically shows the lawyers that I'm going to have my dealings with the idea that you basically, yeah, you are screwed, because the legal laws are very easy to look up, and everything is in my favor. So we got Barnard Star right here, and then we'll go up and look at the data on it real fast. I just scrolled through it, and then you can go back and look at all this. This is the mass of it, 13 mass. Okay, the sucker's still, but so more than likely, what we are getting down in Antarctica right now is that's Barnard Star and with a bunch of uh, the trailers, because that would be the first thing out of the supergiant, so that would be the closest thing to us, okay? So that's more than likely Barnhard Star that we're getting down in Antarctica, okay? And then we go to go back to the other videos, and that basically I'll show the videos and give a little bit of a grasp on what you go ahead and look at and so forth and so on. Because basically, if I go back to Proximity Centauri and everything like that, okay, it's Draconius type, so it's basically it's dying. Okay, Dracula, it's getting the zap sucked out of it, okay? And the idea that that uh, twirler that twirls around with uh, more than likely this, or it could be another deader star that is even brighter than Barnhart, because Barnhart is 13. 0.13 of the mass of the sun, okay? So it's small, but still hella bright, okay? And we are basically seeing three reflections of the best observatory out there in Hawaii, pretty much, besides there in Chile, or other high areas, okay? So, we know that we probably are getting prox proximity, we know we're getting this, okay? Because we see this at Antarctica, okay? Barnhart Star, and then we know we're getting uh, proximity Centauri, we know we're getting uh, Rigel Kiparis B, and then Rigel Cantaris A is banging around with the sun right now. And this is kind of basically a 50-50 because it's always ongoing. Ongoing because of the idea that what I just showed you there is now, and I don't, I don't have to scare anybody because you see these gaps here, folks. It's rotating through and then it'll come back up, okay? But this, every one of the clusters, it's, it's always kind of a false uh, statement in a sense. It's 50-50 true because the sun's not dying as fast. Okay, is some people fear. Uh, it takes like when you we just looked at the data and I can basically pop to a fact of on Barnard Star if I still got it up. Uh, it is one of the oldest at 1.5 trillion years. Okay, so that dark mass that's twirling around Barnard Star, that's more than 1.5 trillion years old, or at exactly the same age. Okay, and it's dying out. Okay, so that's how they've studied over the years to round off. How, how long something's going to last or live or die, okay? So the sun's not going to die. We uh, basically laser track it through. So the idea that if we end up with Rigel Cantaris A, or if we end up uh, with Rigel Cantaris B, or it's just basically we're going to always end up with the sun because we follow the sun, and the sun is in the supergiants right now. And we'll probably follow the sun after it. At least we are at a safe distance, and we always kind of have. Civilization has always survived. So there is no fear. There's everything is going to be just fine. The markets, everything will be fine. All hunky dory and everything like that. That's why a lot of scientists get shut up because the idea that they could scare the hell out of some markets and so forth and so on. Okay. So all these statements that you go through here are stuff that scientists are always talking about of recent, probably the last six months or a year. Okay. And this is what's going on and so forth and so on. Now, I don't have enough time, but I will get into the whole data track of everything of the satellite that we did catch from Soho caught that on, uh, and I'll just keep rolling, okay, roll through all those statements, okay? So you can check all that stuff. So the next, the next video, I'll probably have H1, and I do, I have gotten back to all those sites, so the idea that, now these are the close objects right now, there's planets, okay, but they're hell a long ways out. There are all kinds of AU out, okay? Nine AU and all up, okay? So... But then we have comets that are closer, okay, and then there's the little red dots are basically uh, how far they are away. So, and then you can go down and see the AU that they are away, and they're still, that's the, 
the Super Giant, more H1 and 2, later.